and he's really lucky that he has brought in a bill, though it's not implemented, but uh, he's lucky that in his legacy that he will leave behind, he'll be one of the finest ministers who has brought something which was very close to our hearts. And I'm not taking away his intent of this bill which he has brought in. I have only a few suggestions. I'm not a lawyer. Most lawyers have spoken before me. But the intent of the government, I'm sure, is very clear about what they want to do. But I have a few suggestions and questions to ask them regarding the implementation of this bill, which is actually really small. But there are a few questions I'd like to ask the Honorable out of my lack of legal knowledge. Is this that he says, what is a tout? Now, Mehtab Ji has spoken about it, and so has uh, Sri Raja from the DMK. But I seek a clarification from the Honorable Minister that he says that, which already Mehtabji has read, that who procures in consideration of any remuneration. So it's a one-sided thing, any remuneration. So it's a one-sided thing. See, in the Corruption Act, both people, both parties are considered to be making a mistake. Here, you are only considering one party to it. So should we not make it broader? And whoever engages or whoever hires, both ways, I think the practice is wrong, right? So why should only half the person be punished? So if you are really trying to remove touting completely, why not include both the parties, is my question. So if he could kindly clarify on that. The other question for me is that who are the members present at every meeting? There is no clarity of it. In 45A, they've written that... Uh, the explanation is the majority of members present at the meeting. Now, who will be the members? Who will decide what will happen at the meeting? Who will decide just with such a small thing? Who is a tout? And who will be taking the decision? There is no clarity about this. Now, this is like Raja Ji said, I'm reiterating the point, but there are no objects in the bill. It's probably little, I mean, it's a lawyer's bill which has such poor drafting, unfortunately, because there is a bill has to have his objectives. So there is no objectives in this bill. So what is the real reason of getting this bill? I'm again not taking away from the intention of the government. I'm sure the intention is, but when you are doing something for lawyers, isn't drafting and implementation most important? Then not just, not just intent. Life is beyond intent. The other thing is about reforms, which uh, Meghwal ji said. Sir, I, am now, I have never dealt with lawyers in my whole life, but in the last six months, I'm flooded with lawyers in my life, be it election commission or Supreme Court. <laughs> And there is a saying in Marathi, sir, if with your play, uh, permission, I would like to say it, that in Marathi they say, jo hushar hota hai na, wo kabhi court ki CD nahi chadta hai. Jo hushar hai, to kabhi korta chi paidi chadat nahi. Abhi maa hushar nahi, abhi manna padega, maa ta chad chuki abhi. There was no option. So I had no option but to climb it. And clearly when you go to court, there are a lot of issues that are raised. The tout issue is discussed. But my whole point is there are a lot of reforms required in the court. I mean, justice delayed is justice denied. I don't want to go there. I know that's not the purview of the bill. But even one major point is injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere is what Martin Luther King has said. So I think this is a very broader role that we need. We really need to expand this bill, uh, the course of this bill, which whenever we meet young lawyers anywhere we get, you go to states, like somebody from YSR Congress, Jagan Mohan Reddy Ji's party said that they are giving 5,000 rupees a month to young lawyers. In Kerala, they give, I think, 2,000. So is there something to engage all these youngsters who are studying very hard to pass it? So is there some social program this government has in mind like most states are doing? That is my first question to do, this government. To reiterate which technology upgrade. I think with technology, so many things are happening now. So is the entire game for lawyers going to change in the next few years? So how do they skill themselves to better? I mean, this whole thing about colonialization has been discussed. So it's a past, it's okay, good or bad. I think it's not been that bad on it. So let's not just criticize our history. The way forward is change and change is inevitable in everybody's lives. And that's what policy is also. Policies also have to change with time. Look at the life today, something like artificial intelligence, something we didn't even expect, a mobile phone we didn't expect about 10 years ago in our lives, which has actually changed our lives. So every profession is changing. 
so are the lawyers. So is there something this government has in mind for technology upgrade of all the lawyers? The uh, Protection Act, which uh, make, uh, Mehtabji talked about, I'd like to take it a little forward, that many governments all over the country, not just uh, talking about advocates, but they are even talking about doctors and press safety and security, because somehow I do realize, and we must all put our minds together in this government and in parliament, that there is somehow so much anger in society nowadays. I don't know where this anger is coming from, sir. Even in Maharashtra, we are having a lot of challenge. I'm not trying to digress, but I'm just giving you a small example. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There are a lot of agitations going on in Maharashtra today on uh, reservations, sir, be it Maratha, Dangar, Lingayat, Muslim Arakshans. Lot of stone pelting is suddenly happening. So there is clearly some anger beating somewhere. You hear doctors getting beaten up. You hear threats like Mehtabji said about lawyers. There are press people who are getting beaten up. So there is something missing somewhere, sir. I think this entire House Parliament with legislation, we even need to discuss all these social issues because the intent of changing people's lives for the better is why. That's why we get elected and come here. So at policy level, the intent of the government to bring in to removing of the touts is a very welcome step. Sir, the only thing when I was hearing about touting was, aapko bhi yaad hoga, log sab the, tabhi to multiplexes the nahi, to wo touts khade rekhe, wo ticket cinema ki bikte the. Do, do, das rupiah ka, so rupiah mein ticket. We were, uh, iPad wagera nahi tha. That whole touting business is over. Because first day, first show, life out of us is over. So technology does evolve life. So it will probably eventually do remove touts. But till then, can we do something better, which is simpler, positive, and like Meghwal ji said, Raja ji said, I would like to reiterate their points that why not bring a compressive bill, bring it, we could put it into the law ministry. The law minister is very fine. He's very supportive to all the demands of women that he did for us at the women's reservation bill. So I'd request him to bring, take this back. Let's all take all the points suggested by all the uh, renowned lawyers in this house bring a more comprehensive bill, take all the feedback, maybe send it to a standing committee. There are good lawyers, even in the, I think the environmental minister is also a lawyer, if I stand corrected. Maybe some feedback from his, him also as a lawyer and have a more comprehensive bill in the larger interest of the advocates of this country. Thank you, sir. Shri K. Sureshi. Sir, give me an opportunity to participate in this bill. Sir, let me begin by quoting Mahatma Gandhi ji, who himself was a lawyer and an ardent champion of justice. An unjust law is itself a species of violence. 